I trip through life, I gotta be dreaming I made masterpieces out of my semen And my bitch too nice Not to mention the verbal skill set I'm just too nice, I don't trust it I mean I love it, but it gotta be something It's the guy G Holy repping G-Holy.com And Joe Budden has lost his mind I know what you're thinking Again? Yes You know what I mean? This is Holy's Corner We're gonna get back into Joe Pause, like We're we gonna, we gonna circle back into Joe But right now we got to get into this, you know, blackballing situation with Russ and Tory and the baby and, you know what I mean, academics. So Russ had a conversation with DJ Academics where they was talking about, you know, effectively being blackballed. You feel what I'm saying? What it means and if it's real or, or whatever the case, right? So I don't have a side on this, right? Because... Hmm. What what academic said was Russ has a antique definition of what blackball means. You know what I mean? Like Irv Gotti and them blackballing 50 Cent. It's a clear blackball. Like, yo, if you work with 50, we not messing with you and we hot. Blackball. Easy. You know what I'm saying? What Ack is trying to explain to Russ is like, it's a digital black ball. You know what I mean? Like you can have an algorithmic black ball. And that's also true because you can see it on uh, uh, Instagram right now. You know what I'm saying? I got a homie that keep posting stuff that he ain't supposed to post. You feel what I'm saying? Like according to Instagram. And they got him on lock to the point where I can't even add him in a post. His stuff not getting as much reach. And in 2022, that's a black ball. See what I'm saying? Like, we have a we have a whole new medium. You know what I mean? We got a digital, uh, these digital mediums that allow for blackballing through programming. Usually you blackball through, you know, traditional programming, meaning you program people to say that's a bad guy, leave that person alone. Now it's digital programming, meaning People just ain't going to see it as much. If they not locked in, locked into you, they just ain't going to see it. Now, that brings me to the second good Russ point. Russ then, you know, came back to academics and said, okay, if these guys got real fans, then it can be blackballed. What is keeping them from putting it out? They fans actually going to cop it because they tuned in with them, not the algorithmic, you know, uh, a playlist of Spotify, not the editorial playlist, none of that. Just strictly fans. And I would say this. They don't have no fans. Everybody is a part of the machine. See, this is when this is when hip hop get broken down to the science of what it, what it actually is. There is no such thing as a person that just got fans, not in 2022. Everybody's fans is being brainwashed into thinking they're popping one way or another through digital so if your joint ain't on certain playlists or it's not on the front page when i go to it it didn't even come out it didn't even come out don't you know how like i got a joke right in 2022 right if you went to school with somebody and they're not on social media they dead like they really are dead. Like social media is the way only way you even know people from your high school is alive. If they don't have social media, you might assume that they're dead or they're just dead period because they don't have a digital representation in the space and medium that we all visit the most. We on Facebook more than we at our house. We on Instagram more than we at our house. Think about it. You got to go work eight, 10 hours, eight hours at the minimum. You know what I'm saying? You're a grown ass person. You got an hour there, hour back. That's 10 hours. You're only spending 14 hours of your day in a house. You're spending more time on social media than you are at your house. So you got to understand where we are mentally is a real place. Like, because everything is the mind. So if you can effectively disrupt somebody's energy flow in a space of medium that we consume content the most effectively i feel like that's blackballing 
You could say, yo, the label, you know, nothing's stopping you and this, that, and the third. That's cool. Nothing's stopping you from uh trying to be president. You know what I'm saying? Like you could act you could listen, listen. It's very possible for you to be president. But a lot of things have to align for you to actually be president. And for you to compete with the big boys, you got to have a hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars behind you to run this campaign. You got a big money behind you, big companies, big corporations backing you. So, like, technically, is it possible? Could you put your name on a ballot and whole America vote for you because they mess with you so much? Yeah, but you see how that worked out for Bernie Sanders. Everybody loved Bernie Sanders. He didn't even have a chance. When he got, like, 2.6% of the votes, it was, like, landslide because at the end of the day, money rules and algorithms rule. So, if you can't get your candidate on TV all day every day or yourself as the candidate all day every day then you can't go out there and discredit everybody else in a way where your reach is so small then you don't have a chance you get what I'm saying so on the other hand I do get what Russ is saying if you do have hardcore solid fans that show up every time you shouldn't have this problem the problem is these was mainstream artists the baby Tory Lanez 6 9 all these people they was mainstream artists, so they didn't actually have the fans. That Listen, newsflash, they didn't have the fans. They don't have the fans. Nobody has the fans. Spotify has the fans. Apple has the fans. The labels got the fans through what they're doing on the internet. So, it's twofold. These people really not as hot as you thought they was. And it's also very hard to win without the system. So I see both sides of it. You know what I mean? So that was a dope conversation. Shout out to Act. Russ, I think that was the perfect two people that had this conversation. Do I think the black ball, do I think Tory Lanez uh and and six nine and and uh what's what's my what's homie name? Uh the baby is they being blackballed? Yeah. They they actually are. They are being blackballed. Should it matter? No. Because it's a soft black ball. You get what I'm saying? So get your fans up. Get your hard sales up. This is the problem when people want to do these festivals. You know what I'm saying? And, and like G Herbo was saying on Million Dollars Worth of Game interview recently, this is the problem when people want to jump on everything and, you know, do these club dates and things of that nature when the hard ticket sales is the real fans. You get what I'm saying? So you need to focus on getting real fans instead of trying to trick the system. Because when you trick the system, it's like, Ain't nothing there for you if the system falls. Like, you ever you ever seen people uh, get drafted? You know what I'm saying? That was, like, not averaging as much points as somebody else that got drafted? And you'd be like, damn. Like, like why homie get drafted but other homie ain't get drafted? If this dude averaged 25 points, this dude only averaged 16 points. Why he get to go to the NBA? This dude ain't even get drafted. Because that person is a system player. They play for Duke. They play for North Carolina. And within that system, they do great. Just like the football players. They do great within the system. But move like NBA is not as formulaic and systematic. Neither is the NFL as college. So they wouldn't do well because they don't have the individual skills to be a star within that space. You get what I'm saying? So that's the perfect analogy for the way it is in rap. You perfect, you know, the baby is perfect for, you know, Mainstream. Tory Lanez is perfect for mainstream, but take them away, they kind of looking a little funny in the light. You get what I'm saying? Uh, the female battle rap royale, man. Um, it's going down. Uh, so I don't even want to get into the specifics. I just want to touch on this. It's like Bia versus Akbar V versus Malibu Mitch and. Cardi B and Malibu Mitch trying to meet up and fight in the Bronx. They both posting pictures in the Bronx. Like, uh, Nikki is causing all of it with like the remix, the Queen mix, and of a song that went number one recently. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. I call it the female battle royale. And um, it's some real WWE stuff. And I just want to say this with female battle. I mean, it's not battle rap. Female battle rap. Shout out to them too. You know what I'm saying? Um, But this is what female rap needs. They need to do this. Because one, it's a lot of tension in the air. Y'all need to rub that out. Y'all need to get that off. You know what I mean? Like, like get the tension out. We ain't going to keep playing fake. 
You know what I'm saying? Don't be like the dudes. Don't keep playing fake. Let's go. Get it on. Battle Royale. You know what I'm saying? And then two, it's just going to elevate everybody. Like, I know people think certain stuff be bad for business, but at the end of the day, especially in 20, 2022, how can it be bad for business to be getting attention, you know what I'm saying, in a way where you get to either blog your thing off or you get to wrap your thing off? And at the end of the day, that's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be an entertainer. And so, like, this is putting a spotlight on you. All you got to do is say, yo, I'm going to take this and, you know, run with it. I like it. I like it a lot. You know what I mean? I want to see these girls duke it out. Um, the kumbaya is not, you know, if it's fake, it, it, it just ain't nothing. Like, you know, like, it ain't. I'd rather see a world where women are being competitive because that's going to make them better. Just like when males are competitive. Just like when anybody's competitive. I don't want to watch the NBA and everybody is, you know, patting butts and, and, and shaking hands. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to see that. If we go on a war, we go on a war. Like, we can go to dinner later, but when it's on, it's on. You get what I'm saying? So... I don't want to see all this friendly stuff. Like, it's cool. Like, the kumbaya, like, it's fine. But at the end of the day, nobody's getting sharper from that. If it's like, because I, I recently said, um, recently uh, somebody referred to Young Thug. I think Young Thug. Well, somebody from Atlanta was like, yeah, that's a, um, you know, that's a New York thing. Trying to figure out who had the best verse on the song. We don't care. Yeah, that's the problem. You get what I'm saying? This is why, you know, they never going to be considered as lyrical as people from up top. Because at the end of the day, these people from up top is competing with each other. So you can't compete with them. It's like me and my man get in the ring and, and we spar and we get it on all day. You know what I'm saying? He might beat me. I might beat him. But at the end of the day, you can't beat neither one of us because we do this. So I like it, man. I think it's going to polish up everybody. And, and I think... You know, female rap is really bloated right now. There's more female rappers than male rappers. And I said that first. I said it was coming first a long time ago. Check it out. Maybe like six, seven years ago. I'm like, yo, it's going to be more. Fe so it's a lot of female rappers that's growing up, popping, Glorilla, Ice Spice. They two are the hottest in the game. We don't even have a male Glorilla, Ice Spice. Who is it? Like Tusi or something? You know what I'm saying? They're not even as hot as these people. We talking about cultural relevance and what you see when you on your timeline. You know what I'm saying? It's Ice Spice, Glorilla. So... I need these to be weeded out. You know what I'm saying? I need I need these chicks to be weeded out. Um, everybody's selling their publishing. Is a good move or bad move? Yo, I never claim to be an expert on none of this, but I am an expert on this. So let me say, um, selling your publishing is an absolutely genius move if you could do it. You know what I mean? Right now, now is it some bigger play where? The people that's buying the publishing know something that's coming down the pipeline that the artists, me and everybody else might not know is an absolute, definite, definite possibility that they know something that we don't know. But at the same exact time, what's wrong with playing it safe? If they're going to give you 60 to 100 million for your publishing, you get what I'm saying? Because what they do is they take what you're going to make for the next 10 years and they, and they multiply it by, you know, they multiply the one year by 10 you know what I mean? I'm hearing is the formula and they come up with a number they're going to give you for your publishing. So it's like getting 10 years of your publishing in advance. You get what I'm saying? But people got to really recognize the difference between publishing and, you know, masters. You get what I'm saying? Because at the same time, you could sell your publishing, turn, turn right back around and buy some of your masters back. You get me? Or you could take like the, the part of the argument I didn't get it. I didn't like was I didn't make. These people the think that it's generational wealth to have publishing on, on a genre that, that changed sounds every five minutes. Like, yo, publishing is only worth as much as, like, whatever is going to get played. Like, publishing, if you don't know, like, when you hit publish on something, that means it's available to the public. So anytime this thing is played in public, you're supposed to get publishing. You get what I'm saying? So every time it's played by the public, you get publishing. That's not masters. Masters is ownership. Masters is, you know, you, they they the ones in control of, of the way this thing move around. So, like I said, you could buy some of your masters back and sell your publishing. Also, if you can't take sixty to a hundred million dollars and create gen generational wealth off that, then something wrong with you. This is what I'm saying. Hip hop gonna come and go just like everything else. You know what I mean? Sad to say, sorry to say, 
It's going to come and go just like everything else. You know what's not going to come and go? Chicken wings. Chicken wings has been around before hip-hop. Chicken wings going to be around after hip-hop. So if you're asking me, should I hold on to my publishing or sell it for $100 million and buy as many wing stops as possible, I'm going to go with the wings, me personally. Because ain't nobody stopped eating wings yet. And even if they stop eating wings, we just going to start selling whatever they eat. Because people got to eat. Nobody has to consume hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? People don't even, you know, it's it's a thing called security in your industry. Everybody needs to look good everywhere they go. Therefore, you know, hairstylists and, and, and such going to be in, in, in demand until, you know, it's, they get the home stuff down to where people can do it in two seconds without, you know what I mean? To that invention come. But who knows when that's coming down the line. But who knows what's going to happen with hip hop? That's what I'm saying. Hip hop has changed all the time. This, this hip hop today is not the hip hop of yesterday. So, if I'm somebody, if I'm Burger King, you know what I'm saying, and I'm trying to, you know, get your get whatever music, I'm gonna get what's popping right now, unless I'm doing like some old school campaign. Hip hop is such a right now type of thing. I wouldn't put my eggs in that basket versus chicken wings. That's all I'm saying. I'm going with the wings. I ain't never seen people stop wearing sneakers. You get what I'm saying? It's just a safer bet. I mean, the, the same sneaker brands that was hot when I was three is on fire right now. You know what I'm saying? People was drinking Pepsis when I was, you know, before I was born. And they still drinking Pepsi right now. So I just feel like 60 to 80, 100, 200 million that they're giving you. If you can't build generational wealth with that, then there's something wrong with you, my guy. It's not, it's not, that's not how you build generational wealth. Just holding on to, you know assets that could potentially you want to put yourself in the best position moving forward to have assets that's going to generate that you get what i'm saying and chicken wings gen is, is better than you know some lyrics to me um all right man joe button has lost his mind man we back around to that right we back around to that and i don't just want to say chicken like i don't want that to be like the headline like yo this dude said chicken wings i'm not saying it like that i'm just saying you know Man, you could get in. Let me tell you something about investing real fast. Investing is the highest. Being an investor is the highest level of financial security. You know why? Because you're just tossing money around at startups, hoping one break off. But when it break off, it's going to break off so big that it's going to offset everything you put out that fell 20, 30, 40, 50 times over. That's why investors is never broke. It's always the people who you know, got to run the business or own the business, this, that, and the third. The investors ain't never broke because they get theirs and they get their percentage in. Now I got, you know, <clears throat> I got 10% on 10 companies. That's better than having one single business that you own 100% of. You get what I'm saying? So um, if you're a smart investor, if you can't take 100 million and turn it to a billion, then you're just, you know, you need financial literacy in your life. Joe Button lost his mind because it's two things he said, man. This is this will let me know that Joe Button is like officially out of touch with reality at this point. You know what I'm saying? But definitely um hip hop, right? And I ain't gonna get into the other Joe Button stuff. Like that's just stuff. Like I if you notice, I'm not like I'm all hip hop. I don't report on when people say they, you know, banging people without yondums and all that. Like that ain't really my thing, you know what I'm saying? This dude said Kendrick Lamar. See, they, they they did a, I'm sorry. They did a complex, you know, brackets. He did it with B dot, And, you know, that's where they pick all the, you know, winners between whatever in the specific uh, category. The category they was choosing today. I mean, well, like maybe three days ago when it came out. Um, The category that's going to is who's the best rapper, like right now. You know what I mean? Currently, alive. And this dude picked. Kendrick Lamar, feel me, over Benny the Butcher. I got an issue with that, bro, because this is what I'm saying. Benny really came onto the scene probably like 17. Kendrick Lamar dropped Black Panther, Damn, and Mr. Morale in the Big Stepper since that point. You know what Benny dropped? Benny dropped Tanner Talk 3, classic. Benny dropped Tanner Talk 4. Classic. Benny talk dropped the plugs I met. Classic. Or down there. So it's like 
what are we basing this off of? Like, I just think sometimes it's a little bias between people who rap for the world and people who rap about themselves, and people who is like super gangster versus people who like seem like they're doing it for the culture. You get what I'm saying? Because gangster rap could come off a little selfish, a little easy, egotistical. So like, you feel better saying out loud, like, nah, like, like this, this is a little better over here because you know this is, you know, he's rapping for the world. In all actuality, bro. Damn ain't nowhere near Tanner Talk 3. And it's not even close. You know what I'm saying? Plugs I met is better than Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? And whatever six songs he was on is much better. Tanner Talk 4 is way better than Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper. So I just don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about today. We got to be talking about the past five years. Past five years, Benny is the superior rapper. Bars and otherwise. Bars, projects, consistency. It's not even close. So I just had an issue with that. And um, he also, like, this would let me know he's, like, super out of touch. He also, first of all, he ended up picking Jay-Z. Like, Jay-Z is not the hottest rapper out. You know what I'm saying? Even though every time he do something, it's a moment. It's not that, like, it's ridiculous. And it ended up being Jay-Z versus Kendrick Lamar. It's just ridiculous. Um, B-Dot said something even more ridiculous. He said J. Cole was a top 15 rapper ever. I'm glad Joe Budden got at him for that. Like, well, like you, you don't, like, 15 rappers? Like, come on, let's be serious. Um, it was something else. Somebody else that he said was better than somebody that was... To oh, he picked Lil Wayne over Pusha T. I was done. It's like, bro, Pusha T has dropped. It's almost dry in Daytona. Lil Wayne has dropped the Carter 5. And, and features like what are we talking about it's like mind-boggling it's not even close you get what i'm saying like what what are we saying like even if we talking about bars like push your t is more consistent with the bars like not even saying he's better he's just more consistently good um so yeah for him to just say yeah lil wayne lil wayne like no nah, man i get it if we talking about historically but we talking about right now it's not even close kendrick lamar is nowhere near benny the butcher at all in no way shape form or fashion and Lil Wayne is nowhere near Pusha T it's not even close it's not close and I love let me not say nowhere near he is but he's not he's not it's like a clear winner 2-1 clear you get what I'm saying but um that's it man this has been Holy's Corner it's the guy G Holy man good talking to y'all always just come kick it chop it up you know what I'm saying with my people and you know um, you can check the audio and all everything, Spotify, everywhere you can get a podcast. You know, this is a podcast now. You know, a lot of people supported the first joint, the second episode. Just keep tuning in, man. If you want real takes on real life, G Holy is the God and he's the God, man. So I'm your go to, man. High at me. We out here. Maybe the catch is, I'll never be considered the best Never even considered sitting that they mention the rest It don't bother me, as long as they know I know they know the wind blows, enjoy the breeze Fuck the way that it goes, I'm worth my weight in gold Multiplied by platinum, so you can keep the plaques My nigga, I'll keep the rapping